Hi, I'm Sharon Valentine, Law of Attraction Parenting Coach. I live in Snoqualmie, Washington, and I would like to be considered for the live online event and, of course, the book deal. My passion is working with parents in finding ease and peace in their relationship with their kids. I help them do this by teaching them the laws of the universe, about their own alignment, and how to teach their kids about their internal guidance system. My message today is that as parents, we often don't trust our kids to use their internal guidance system to make their highest choices because we're fearful. We can spend too much time trying to get them to stop resisting us long enough to listen to what we have to say about their choices. We don't trust these choices because they might get hurt, disappointed, or worse. They push back because they want their freedom and everyone ends up feeling powerless. Can you relate to this? I started to feel powerless because everything had become a power struggle. I wanted my kids to do things my way, and they had a different agenda in mind. No surprise there. Even though I taught them about their internal guidance system, in moments of fear, which you know sometimes lasted a while, I wouldn't let them use this guidance, which is the intuition they were born with. It's that part of them that helps them choose what serves them best. And it's painful when our kids shut us out. We get our feelings hurt and don't feel in touch with our child. The harmony in the family can break down. It was a challenge when my son Dustin, my youngest of three, became a preteen because he wouldn't conform to what I felt was in his best interests. After all, I felt like I knew what was best because I had more life experience. We mean well because we care about our kids and we want them to succeed. But the breakdown happens when we want to choose for them. One time I found myself trying to fix a problem I thought my son was having, which was overeating and poor food choices. Every time we left the house, he was choosing heavy foods that were loaded with sugar, which just made him feel sick, but he continued these food choices anyway. I just wanted him to eat in a balanced way and feel good. He was not cooperating. I started to hide the snacks in our house because I thought my son was abusing them by eating them all at once. I didn't feel I could trust his food choices. Eventually, it was a cat and mouse game. I'd hide the snacks and he'd try and find them. And when he did find them, he'd gorge on them because he didn't know if he'd find these snacks again anytime soon. It wasn't a fun game and neither one of us was amused. I felt like he had no control and he felt like he was being denied. I wanted resolution to this. So I took my son to a food clinic that specialized in healthy eating. I thought I'd try the professional approach. Well, after a few sessions at the clinic, the counselor took me aside and she said in a kind but stern voice that it wasn't my son that needed to change, it was me because I was trying to force a behavior that couldn't be forced. She went on to explain that in hiding the snacks, my son felt like he couldn't have what he wanted and we all know how that makes us feel. We want to have it. I couldn't see what I was creating because I was right in the middle of it. The last thing I wanted to do was disempower my son, but I was doing just that. At first I was horrified with this realization because I didn't want to think it was my issue. Then something inside me clicked and I started to hear my own internal guidance system. And what I realized was this, I wasn't allowing my son his process. I wasn't letting him find his way and make his own choices, even if I didn't agree with them. After all, I was the problem, not my son. That was really a shock. My intent was to have a good feeling household. So I agreed with a lot of hesitation to try the new approach that the clinic was suggesting, which involved not hiding any snacks. So once at home, my son and I had a heart-to-heart -heart talk, and I agreed I'd leave the snacks in the cupboard. His part was agreeing to not eat them all at once. Relinquishing my perceived control over this situation was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I couldn't bear to think that my son would now be free to overeat and simply put on more weight. And you know, he did for a while. I had to remind him of our agreement over and over, and it was tortured not hiding the snacks. But with time, I learned that I could trust that my son could use his own internal guidance system to choose what was best for himself. 
I watched as he learned to recognize when he was truly hungry as opposed to eating out of boredom or frustration because I wasn't telling him what to do and how to feel, which allowed himself the opportunity to t tap in for his own guidance. Months later, the snack stayed in the cupboard for long periods. The tug of war had stopped and my son was finding his way. Letting go can be so difficult for parents. This experience helped remind me that each child is on their individual path, that they've come into this life with a specific intent all their own, and I've been trying to control my sons. I had allowed my fears to get in the way of what I knew to be true, which was that his internal guidance system would never fail him, and kids always do manage to find their way. Even though we often don't trust our kids to use their internal guidance system, parents, it's imperative to remember their internal guidance system is their personal compass to their highest choices. We can never actually control our kids, and it's important that they learn to use their guidance to create their lives. Allow your child the freedom to find their way and make what may appear to be mistakes. By living what they don't want, they'll more clearly be able to identify how they do want to live this life. And as a result, you will have more ease and peace in your relationship with your kids.